Today I'm going to be tying up another wet fly from Ray Bergman's Trout. This is called the Gunnison. Attractive little pattern. I think it's tied mostly as a kind of a caddis fly. The wing on this is a white tipped turkey. I think the white tip on that kind of adds a little bit of a target to the fly in the water. Handsome little pattern. The body is a green floss and a white floss rib, which I, I like these kinds of flies with the floss ribs on them. That's the Gunnison. Nice little handsome wet fly. I'll get started tying. I'm going to start the gunnison with my hook and the vise. This is a Mustad 3399 and a number 6. Just a standard wet fly hook. I'll go ahead and debar that hook. The thread, because the gunnison has a floss body, I'm going to start with a Danville 6 aught in white. I've already waxed the thread. I'm going to attach my thread about an eye length behind the eye of the hook and advance my thread down to just about a little bit past the point of the hook. This will set me up for tying in the tail, the rib, and the floss body. The tail on the gunnison is just regular natural mallard flank. So I'm just gonna select just kind of an average. You could get one of these that's a little uh, barred, a little bit darker if you want, have that a little bit more pronounced. I'm just going to get maybe about a half a dozen, ten of those barbs off of there. I want to have them all about the same length. I'm just going to bring those all together and tie those in so they're about the shank length, I, I generally like them a little bit longer. I go from right behind the eye of the hook to about the bend of the hook. Continue wrapping downward a few wraps to secure that tail in. The rib is a white floss, and I've got a Danville four-strand rayon in white. I'm only going to use two of the strands for the rib. I don't need the rib to be real thick. I'm going to twist that up also so that the rib looks round and more corded, if that's a word, then I don't want it laying flat. If it lays flat, at least my experience is, is it takes up too much of the body and you don't have what looks like a rib. You have more what looks like a stripe. A couple more wraps working my way down. The hook shank still to the end of the shank. Then I'm going to tie in the body. The body is a I'm using a Danville four strand rayon and a Kelly green. This I will use all four strands. I tie that in. I'll leave the rib and the body, the length of the overall body on the hook shank. Couple more wraps. That will put me right down the end of the shank. And now I'll wrap forward, collecting all that material along the hook shank. Doesn't have to be perfect touching turns here, but you do want to try and keep that somewhat together so that it's nice and smooth underbody. More wax to help grip this a little bit. And then I'll wrap that all the way down. Being about an eye length, half an eye length or so from behind the eye of the hook, I'll leave my thread hanging. Now I'll apply the green floss for the body and the rib.
couple things to note. You might have noticed that I got some rayon fibers that were broken as I was putting in the green body. And that mostly has to do with just rough fingers, hangnails, things like that, rough skin this time of year that everything's getting dry. Plus, the rib slipped out of my fingers there. That's because, again, dry weather, everything's kind of slick. One of the things you can do is you can take some dubbing wax. And I've, I've talked about this in other videos where the, the proper place most of the time when you're dubbing for any wax is going to be on your fingers because you want your fingers tacky. Well, you can take a little of that dubbing wax and, and put it on your fingers and just rub it around so you just have a slight tackiness. So as you're wrapping these in, the wax isn't going to mess up the floss body or anything, but it gives you a little bit more tacky. Uh, tackiness to your fingers to wrap that in as well as might smooth off some of that rough skin and you don't fray that as much. Just a little tip there. Now I'm going to change over to my finishing thread. It's going to be a Danville 6 aught in black. Get a little wax on my thread. Place this about an eye length behind the eye of the hook. So now I can put it in the wing. The wing on the Gunnison, the recipe calls for white tipped turkey. I've mentioned in other videos that Turkey and I have a uh, growing relationship, let's put it that way in terms of all the different feathers that are on there and different birds and maybe even different species, I'm not certain. I'm not certain exactly what feather you would get the white tipped turkey from because I've seen like in pictures for this fly, it's a more of a darker brown mottled with a nice distinct white tip. But the only feathers that I have are these, which are kind of classified as an Ozark feather, generally for like muddler minnows and things like that but they do have a nice little white tip. So I'm gonna go with these and it, it works out pretty well. The, the, I think the finished wing looks pretty good. If you don't have any white tipped turkey, I think if you're wanting to tie this and, and fish this, I would think that just regular Ozark like I have here or a mottled turkey or something, I think would probably work fine. I think the white tip on it probably is there for a little bit of a hot spot, a target, something like that to grab the attention of the fish. Tie that in. The length is going to be like all these wet flies, generally about halfway down the hook shank. I've got just a little curve in that. It's a kind of a more of a cup. I don't know if you can see, but this slip right here has just a little bit of a cup to it. I'll try and tie that in again. See if I can't work that out. Keep that a little flatter. Yeah, I got some of that out. very tip of that also has just a little bit of a curve to it but as a fishing fly this is still going to be just fine you can also see my thread got a little bit frayed there again those rough hands that i was talking about sometimes the wax on the thread will help prevent that but this time of year things get dry and your hands are just a little rougher so the hackle on the Gunnison is just a brown hackle. I'm using a brown hen. This particular cape has some nice long feathers to it. So I can get three or four wraps in. Try 
trim away, I'll isolate the tip and trim away everything. It leaves me with just a little bit of a triangle here for an anchor. I'll wrap that in, smoothing all of this off just a little bit for that hackle, leaving my thread right up against the wing. Take my hackle pliers. I'll probably get three to four wraps in on this. I don't need this to be real, real heavy. That wing, because of that little cup on that one side, got kind of an interesting little look to it. I'm not going to fret about it because, as I said, this is more of a fishing fly. I'll sweep all of that back to start making the head of the fly. Wrapping rearward. I'll wrap enough to where I have that rachis anchored in real well, and I can break that off. I want to make certain that the head's nice and smooth, working my way from behind the eye of the hook rearward. I want that just a little bit, a wrap or two longer. There we go. So now I'll flatten my thread and I'll put in a whip finish. A little bit of head cement, come back a couple layers of black lacquer on that, and the gunnison will be finished. And some little pattern. I think it was probably tied as a, like I said, a caddis kind of pattern. I like these wet flies that have the floss body and the floss rib on them. I just think they're awfully handsome. Interesting looking flies. So there is another wet fly from Ray Bergman's Trout, the Gunnison. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help dressed irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.